So we're ready to call the meeting to order. I'm probably not the right person to be up here, so we'll just forego the formalities, as I said, and why don't we go to the meetings of the last meeting and uh, ask for approval of those. I'll and move approval of meetings, minutes? Pardon? I'll move approval. Okay. Uh, motion has been made for approval. Any seconds? Okay, Jerry second. Uh, one question I've got is, <clears throat> who is the FMAO and P? Is that permissible to ask? Who sent this email? Um, I'm not sure who sent it. I just got it right before the meeting. Um, and so I do not know who or where that is from. Okay. Um, can I just get, uh, so we have a motion and a second, um, just a clarification of all in favor of approval of the minutes, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Now, do we have a list of uh, items for discussion today? Um, I didn't bring my packet with me, I apologize. We have an extra one. The next item on the agenda is any citizens in the audience that wish to be heard. None be heard. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and proceed, Christy, as we should. And we can proceed to the next item on the agenda, which is item number five. Okay, recommend consultants for engineering services for more at airport. Uh, what is the status of that? I've, uh, it, it looks as though from the information that's in the packet that has been determined for the next period, is that correct? So what we're looking to the airport committee tonight is a recommendation to recommend approval of Mead and Hunt um, to the city council. Uh, an RFQ was issued for engineering services on June 2nd. The review group in included um, Walter from this group, Wayne from this group, Steve from this group, uh, myself, Forrest, Jim, and Steve Iverson from the city of Moorhead. Uh, we had two submittals, Mead and Hunt and Bolton and Mink, and we decided to interview both firms. So they were interviewed on August 26th. The group did then recommend the preferred firm of uh, Mead and Hunt. So what we're looking for uh, is a motion to recommend approval to Mead and Hunt as the preferred selection for the airport engineering services at the Moorhead Municipal Airport for the next five year term. This would then subsequently go to the city council for final approval. Yeah, I will make a motion that we approve Mead and Hunt. I will second that. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Next item, I guess, Airport Minimum Standards Manual. Again, Christy's our guru. She can explain what we've got there. Thank you. Um, so we have, over the last couple of years, had a couple different situations that we have done um, certain procedures for. Um, one of the most recent ones was um, parking of vehicles next to, for example, a private hangar or a T-hangar. 
And so in meeting with uh, MnDOT representatives, one thing that they mentioned is that oftentimes airports will have minimum standards. Um, and this is just sort of a, a working document that can be amended from time to time as the airport needs it. Um, we do have, or we have found um, a number of different examples. Uh, what we're looking for tonight is um, one or preferably two members of the airport committee um, that would agree to work with us in creating some of those standards that we would then bring back to the committee for consideration. Uh, we would also work closely with the um, airport manager and FBO on you know, consulting on some of the things that we're looking at here. Um, but we thought that this would be a good document for the airport to have as we continue to grow. Um, so we're hoping for two members of the airport committee that would be willing to help us explore the standards for that document. I will also mention that we have had um, we have had some concerns with aircraft on the apron um, over winter months as it relates to safety for snow removal, um, specifically an aircraft that doesn't frequently move, um, so it can be quite difficult to push snow around that aircraft. Um, I believe the email that Kim just handed out is in relation to that, and um, and the owner does note that they they plan to move it. Um, but if we did want to, um, we have the the airport FBO and manager here that can talk to this much more, uh, much better than I can. Um, but if we did want to work on the manual and do something separately for that particular concern now, um, a couple of the things that uh, Mike has found in some of his analysis is, um, you know, you could have a, uh, just for an example, a 72-hour parking limit during winter months um, as just one example of making sure that aircraft are frequently moving to allow for snow removal. Um, some people use ramp fees. We've never done that in Moorhead, but that's another, another consideration. So sort of two things that are on the table here. One, looking for one or two members for the committee to serve on this group that'll look for minimum standards. And two, whether or not you want to um, consider a temporary um, procedure for aircraft on the apron during winter months. And Mike, I don't know if there's maybe anything you wanna add to that just from a safety perspective or sort of where that came from. I think that's <clears throat> probably one of the things that you would bring up if this uh, group gets together and makes some of these decisions and so forth. I guess if we didn't have this person 
that we all know who is and the problems concerned with it, with snow removal, if he were not there, you could still have an aircraft come in on a Monday and be there on Tuesday and it snows on Wednesday, you got the same problem with him as you do with this one, but this one is there all the time. Um, and you might be able to visit with a person that comes in and knows they're gonna be there for two or three days and we're getting snow, we could move it as we move the snow or they could move it, but the problem is this person uh, just ignores our requests. But uh, it's still gonna be a problem with transient aircraft coming in and sitting for a day or two or three at a time with snow removal, but probably not as great as it has been in the past. Yes, looking for volunteers. Three little dots. Three little dots. Does the volunteer have to be a member of the committee? Could use the time-honored tradition of volunteering people that aren't here. So Walt Vormers is on the. Are you working now, Jerry? I don't know why the microphones aren't working. <clears throat> oh, okay. Thank you. No, I'll agree with you. I, I did a lot of snow removal, and you talk to all the people that did it, it's not the cars that are moved, it's the ones that were sitting there all the time. That's the problem. So I agree with, you know, doing something about that. Yeah, you know, the chances of an airplane coming in and sitting there for two days, and if it doesn't snow, it's not a problem, and he'll leave in two days, and he might not be there when right. it does snow, but the one we've got now is there all the time and does create big problems, yes. Well, it goes back to common sense. You know, what we need is two people, right, Christy, for a, a committee? Yes, please. Do what? I can't hear you. He asked if you wanted to be on that committee. Okay. And I guess the answer to my question, do you have to be on the committee or do we accept Ryan as one of the two? No, we'll wanna walk, work with Ryan and Mike on this as well. So they, you'll be invited. Yeah, okay, will Ryan be one of the two people f that we're looking for then is what my question? No, we'll still want two from the committee, okay. please, All right. if possible. Because, you know, I've only been out there about two, two and a half years or so, so whether I'm, you know, acceptable for that or not or it's all about common sense pardon it's all about common sense so oh th that's the whole thing exactly. yeah i haven't looked at the minimum standards i'm sure they have canned ones and all that and you just kind of tweak it but yes we would look to it, see which ones we'd want to included and then develop them based on what we need at the moorhead airport I've worked on mm -hmm. stuff like that before and mm -hmm. Like I said, 
I told you as an electrician, I've heard it many times where people say, well, where in the code does it say you can't do that? They try to get around everything and it gets me a little upset, but you know, it's, a lot of it's common sense. But you gotta deal with that and it's unfortunate. But as far as the Stinson out there, what happens if you don't move it? I would hate to go out there and grab a hold of it. There's a liability issue in the park it in the grass or whatever. Did that work? Mike? What's the odds of that actually, him actually moving it for the winter? Does it work, Mike, to move it or not? I mean, if he were to move it, if we, yeah, I mean, if we were, you know, to prescribe a location that he could move it to. I have one question for you. Is that, is that airplane that sits out there, is that air, uh, airworthy? No. no. So, I mean, maybe we could have a clause in there that any, any besides, any issues, you know, somebody coming to town, maybe they're in town for a week or 10 days even, and there's a snowstorm, but that's one thing. But a plane like this, you should have a clause in there that any plane that's tied down more than 24 hours that's not scheduled to go into shop needs to be airworthy to be tied down on the ramp. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay, so point of order, um, we want one more um, volunteer, and it sounds like you have some good ideas. Would you like to, to serve yeah. on this to come up with? I can be on it, that's fine. Fantastic. So. Brian, was that you? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. So I will um, make a motion to appoint, let me see, Christy, you had some nice words, verbiage in here. Um, I'll just say Jerry and Brian, to the, is it a subcommittee? A uh, working group to develop draft minimum standards for the Moorhead Airport. Exactly what you said. That's a mouthful. All right, do we have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And thank you, Brian and Jerry. And Brian and Mike. Everyone else is going to work on this. Next item, Christy. Um, just a really quick follow up on that one. Um, did we want to put anything in place prior to approving the minimum standards as it relates to, for example, airworthiness of a plane that is parked on the ramp? or is the preference of the committee to wait for the minimum standards to develop those? No, <coughs> well, it, it's, gonna, that's too, <coughs> it's gonna take too long, winter's coming. There yeah, has if to we be wanted something to move, we could probably do that. Otherwise it might be there for some time yet. Yeah. Could snow tomorrow. I'm kind of pokey, so. Mike? Yeah, well, that's the problem with that's the problem with doing it before we have the. Again, I guess under federal regulations with federal money coming into the airport, uh, we're going to be battling some of that when we make our uh, restrictions at Morehead here. And I've already talked to our FAA representative on that, so I I do have a clear understanding of being able to set minimum standards, and we do have the authority to do that. We just have to make sure that um, they're minimum standards that you know meet all of our FAA requirements and that they're implemented fairly. So that would be done by the the group then, these the volunteers in the city. Once the minimum standards are set, then I would work with the airport manager. Okay. But could we have something done before that for this particular situation? 
Not Simi really. Similar to the parking procedure that we approved about a year or two ago, um, you could have a separate procedure for this. Um, we would just need to know what that is. And then I think uh, the difference between having a procedure for an airplane versus a vehicle is um, like just say, for example, in your situation that you had brought up about being airworthy, um, if a plane isn't airworthy and doesn't move, what would we do in that situation? You know, is it a situation where it's a fine? Um, it, it's not like a motor vehicle that you can tow. Um, so it's just something that does need to be thought out as to what your standard is and what the repercussion is if you don't meet it. Well, how much authority does the airport manager have as far as, like he told Mike, where does this say? Well, doesn't Mike have any authority to say, well, you can't be out there because you're not airworthy, you haven't moved it? And according to this letter, there's, somebody said, you know, about abandonment. It's been kind of abandoned out there. If that was outlined in the minimum standards, then we would have authority that, to tell them to move it. But we do need to have something that would be applicable to everyone who is utilizing the ramp. Sounds like we need to have the meeting sooner than later. Yeah, that's for sure. It's gonna snow any day now. And from what I gather, he's, he's not gonna cooperate. I will point out that he sent an email, um, the gentleman in question before the meeting that was printed out and left um, at your stations. And if the preference is to wait on this particular situation until we have the minimum standards developed, um, then we can move on to number seven. It is at the discretion of the committee. So I think having minimum standards um, created by the subcommittee or working group would be um, very advantageous. Um, I do think that the airport manager could probably um, give this person heads up and say, hey, if you wanna move it over to that grass over there, we can tie it down. Otherwise, you might be subject to other things that are coming down the pipe. So I don't know if that would work or not. And we can certainly look into that. I would just wanna make sure that the airport isn't taking on any liability by requesting they park in an area that they shouldn't be parked in. Um, so before we would make that decision, I would just wanna look into that a little bit more as an option. I think there's plenty of parking at the uh, Holiday Mall area too. So if they want to move it there, they could. Yeah. The last thing that I will mention is there was two emails that were um, left at your seats today and the other one did appear to have, um, I apologize, it was sent right before the meeting so I have not had a chance to look at it. Um, it did appear that it had some suggestions for minimum standards so we will make this part of the record and then also provide it to the working group. Does this group have a um, no one membership roster? Um, so we would say it's going to be uh, Jerry, Ryan, um, Ryan and Mike and Marvin if he wishes to participate um, and myself and, and Kim. No, I'm sorry, I, I meant the, the, the email that was sent because it was, it was just sent from this group. I um, am not sure who the group is okay. or who sent it or a contact person because if their concerns are gonna be met, I assume probably some people in this room might know individuals on this email, so. 
ಬರ್ತಾರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡುವ You ready to go try the next item, Christy? We sure can. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda, number seven, is the airport capital improvement plan. Um, this is something that the airport committee reviews every year. Um, I do want to point out, you know, starting on page nine, the recently finished projects, this is over $5 million in pavement rehabilitation, starting with the tea hangers, the apron, the runway, and the taxiway over the past few years. Um, so I just want to say thank you to MnDOT and especially our FAA representatives because this level of funding is um, not within our uh, current entitlement funds, which we get 150 per year, $150,000 per year. Um, this was our FAA representatives working for the Moorhead Airport to get us discretionary funding um, at a nation nationwide scale to be able to do these projects. So that was really, really great. Um, currently for 2022, we um, do have to pay back the Houston County Airport, which we had borrowed money from to complete these projects, uh, our entitlement of $150,000. Um, MnDOT has also informed us that they have purchased a new AWOS that they want relocated on the Moorhead Airport because the current AWOS does have issues during winter months. Um, so we'll be, we'll be working with Mead and Hunt to find a location for the AWOS as the current one does not meet standards um, and potentially getting that relocated in 2022 or 2023. We're also currently um, looking to get bids for painting the beacon. Um, I have done outreach to two firms locally that would be able to provide that service. So we're working with them on getting bids to paint the beacon. And then we're also going to start looking at the electrical building and the electric maintenance equipment um, that is a number of years old. So we want to take a closer look at what would actually need to be um, replaced and looking at the building itself, um, which uh, luckily we have some great folks at the airport that have done some work on it to reinforce the building, but it's not in great shape. So we just want to take a closer look at that and figure out what that next step might look like. And then on page 10 is the capital improvement plan with the revisions that were made the last time you looked at it last year. And again, it's looking at the Houston County payback and potentially looking at the AWOS in 2022. Um, the project that the airport committee moved up last year was the pavement of a new taxi lane and a vehicle access road to 2023, 2024, depending on when we would have the funds available to do that project. And that would open space for an additional five private hangars. And then looking into the future, um, the beacon is on there in 2024, but again, we're looking to just repaint that because it still is in pretty good condition and functionally, functioning well. Um, I did put pavement maintenance in there. I'd like to do that about every five years just to try to keep our pavement in as best condition as possible. We have the parking lot pavement maintenance in addition. Um, this one I would like to take a closer look at over the next year, and uh, I don't believe that the FAA would participate in funding this project. So I just wanna get a little bit more background for the airport committee because it's not an immediate concern. Um, I will bring more information um, back on that at a future meeting. And then you can see additional projects from 2029 to 2043. So for this item, I'm just looking for a, um, any comments from the airport committee on the current CIP. And if everything is consistent with what you would like to see, uh, a request to um, make a recommendation to approve the CIP for this year. Again, we can change this um, next year when we look at it again, um, but just seeing if everything looks okay for now. Um, essentially, we will not have many funds next year to do 
many projects um, and we do have to pay back Houston County. So we were looking at that 23-24 um, timeline for a next project. We got two payments to Houston, is that correct? This is two of two, would two be next two. year. Okay. Yes. Any further discussion whether we accept it as it is presently? This looks good to me, I would move approval. Second? I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Number eight. So this was in addition to the agenda. Um, it was submitted by um, Marissa, who I'm guessing is here in the audience now, um, to a council member uh, uh, for consideration. Um, it is a request to consider the a potential name change to the Moorhead Airport to Moorhead Municipal Airport, Florence Kling and Smith Field. Um, the packet includes some information on this request on page 11 and some background on Florence. Um, I will let uh, Marissa talk a little bit more about this. I will um, point your attention that we did receive a letter of support from the Minnesota 99's chapter chair and past vice chair. And if this is something that the airport committee is interested in pursuing further, um, what staff is recommending is um, that we do some uh, written notification and solicitation of comments from airport users, MnDOT and the FAA, and that we bring those comments then back to the airport committee for review, and that the airport committee would then make a recommendation to council. Um, so before we would uh, recommend a name change, again, we would look at getting some feedback from airport users, MnDOT and the FAA, before bringing that recommendation forward. And Marissa, if you would like to um, address the committee, you can, yep, you can address at the podium and um, hopefully the microphone is on so everyone can hear you. Thank right. you. If not, I talk really loud too. Um, so thanks for having me. My name is Marissa and I am a resident of Moorhead. I'm a teacher in Abercrombie, North Dakota, so I rushed back home from school to be here. And I am an AV geek, which I assume most of you in this room are, like an aviation enthusiast. When I was in fifth grade, uh, my dad went back to college to be a mechanic. So I grew up on 727s and DC-10s. He was a mechanic in San Francisco. Um, so I've grown up on airplanes. I learned how to fly in Crookston. Um, I got my airplane tattoo on my wrist. <laughs> so um, the reason I tell you this is because if anybody should have known who Florence Klingensmith was, it should have been me. Um, as a woman, as a aviation geek, as somebody who spends my evenings at home watching YouTube videos of airplanes and airplane history, I should have known who Florence was, and I didn't. Um, and I didn't know about her until somebody made the recommendation to read this book, Fly Girls. And this, it was a couple years ago now that I read the book, and even when I got into it, I didn't realize um, that one of the pilots, there's five featured in the book, but one of the pilots was from Moorhead. So I stumbled across that through my reading. And um, at first I was really sad. Like how can this woman um, with such an incredible like history have been forgotten? Um, then I was mad. I'm like, how did we let this happen? Um, and it wasn't just Florence. There's, you know, for three other pilots in this book that you probably haven't heard of. Um, so I decided I wanted to do something about that. And um, there was some good timing when Moorhead was offering some grants for some artwork. And I was able to put a proposal in and um, get the Moorhead ace to support the mural that's on the side of their building. Um, so that was a start. We had um, and it's actually tomorrow's a two-year anniversary of that. We had a declared Florence Klingensmith Day. We had a big celebration out at the mural. The author of the book, um, Keith O'Brien, came to town. He was here for some other things anyway, so again, it was good timing. Um, but he came to the dedication, and 
I've stayed in touch with him a little bit the past couple of years, just working on some ways to get Florence's name out there. And um, changing the airport name or adding to the airport name has always been on my mind. Like, this is something I want to propose and want to work on. Um, and the time just felt right now to do that. So I know you guys have a letter from the Moorhead or the Minnesota 99s, um, a letter of support. I actually have about 30 letters of support. I didn't bring them all with me, but if it's okay with you, I'd like to just spend a couple of minutes reading a letter of support from Keith, the author of the book. Um, and I brought copies for all of you, so I don't know, do I give them to you? Okay. Um, so to the members of the City of Moorhead Airport Committee, I have been fortunate to visit your city on two occasions. In 2017, I came to Moorhead while doing research for my book, Fly Girls. Two years later, I returned when libraries across Fargo and Moorhead chose Fly Girls to be a community read. Both times, I was there for one reason and one reason only. I was there because of Florence Klingensmith. By now, I understand you have heard of her, but allow me to explain why Florence is so important to me and to history and to all of us. It's not because Florence, a Clay County native was the first woman to receive a pilot's license in North Dakota. It's not because she was the only female aviator based out of Minneapolis in the early 1930s. It's not even because Florence was one of the few women who knew how to fly a plane at the time. It's because Florence was one of the best at it and she fought through much just to sit in the cockpit. In the United States in um, 1928, there were 29 million women eligible to vote in this country. Out of that number, 29 million, fewer than a dozen, fewer than 12 had a pilot's license on file at the US Department of Con Commerce, um, which was the regulating agency at the time. That June, Florence joined their ranks with her first solo flight. But Florence wasn't satisfied to just cruise in the skies over Moorhead and Fargo. She wanted to compete in the air races, one of the most popular sports in America in the 1920s and 30s. And she quickly proved that she had the skill to race anyone, male or female. She was faster than Amelia Earhart. Indeed, it was Florence, not Amelia, who won the first ever Amelia Earhart Trophy race at the National Air Races in Cleveland in 1932. And it was Florence, not Amelia, who was invited to race against the men in Chicago one year later in 1933, the first woman to ever compete against the men in the sky. That day, Florence would fly a plane that had killed many men. The plane, called a GB, was shaped like a bullet and was the fastest plane at its time. It had flaws that would lead directly to Florence's death too. The right wing of the speedy plane disintegrated in mid-flight that day in Chicago, killing Florence just as her life had begun. She was only 29 years old. It's moments like these in the 1930s, male aviators typically received grand memorials, moments of silence and national tributes. Florence received nothing of the like. Instead, male aviation officials in Chicago shipped her body home to Moorhead on a train, naked and wrapped in newspapers. Despite all the obvious evidence, they claimed it was Florence's fault that she had crashed. They blamed her because she was a woman, a woman who dared to fly. In Fly Girls, I had the chance to write this historical wrong, and I consider it one of the great honors of my career. By telling Florence's story, I helped inspire others like Moorhead resident Marissa Banks and Lorazel. Through Marissa and many others, Florence lives again. But you have a chance to do much more than I ever could do. By renaming your airport after Florence Klingensmith, you could reclaim a local hero and remind everyone who flies in and out of your city about a great woman who once lived there and dared to do amazing things. She was cherished once in Moorhead, and she could be again. It's really up to you. So um, thank you for letting me speak. And uh, I know that a lot of times money is a concern for these types of things. And I did do a little bit of research. I reached out to the city or the airport manager in Faribault, Minnesota, and they did something similar to one of their, you know, cherished aviators. 
and the, the only cost they incurred was to change some signage at the airport. So um, this is not a huge um, financial endeavor that I'm proposing, um, and it's not even necessarily a name change. You know, we're, I'm just proposing that we add her on to um, pay her respects, and my goal really is to, I just want people to know about her and, and learn about her and remember her. Thank you. Thank you, Marissa. I think that um, I'd like to make the motion to recommend the proceeding um, with soliciting comments um, from airport users, FAA, MnDOT, and other interested parties um, related to the changing the name of the Moorhead Municipal Airport to Moorhead Municipal Airport, Florence Kling and Smith Field, JKJ. Great, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so what we will do next, again, is just send some information out to airport users and get feedback. And then we will bring that feedback back to the airport committee for your consideration on next steps. Airport meetings next, I guess. 2022 meeting dates. So no action needed on this, um, but just a uh, FYI of the four proposed meeting dates in February, May, August, and November. Um, potential fly-in in September 2022, but we'll wait to get a little bit closer to that date to um, to see about that. And uh, just wondering if there's any comments on these dates, and if not, I will book them in the calendar. I make a motion to accept them as they are, even though they might change. A second? Yeah, I second that. And all those in favor say aye. Yep, yes. Aye. aye. Aviation reports and fuel report. Ryan's probably got that, or do we have it? That is on page 16 of your packet. And I'll just note to Ryan and Mike, if there's anything else that you ever want to talk to the committee about, you're welcome. And I just appreciate getting the fuel numbers as well. Adjournment. Any objections to an adjournment? Motion to adjourn. I have one more thing here. Okay, Jerry. I was just looking at these proposed concerns and questions and um, about the tea hangers. And it says who flies less than 13 hours a year. I think that's going to clear out half of them, right, Mike? <laughs> more than half of them. But one of the concerns uh, that I've heard is that the self-facing tea hangers are more desirable than the north ones. Now, if you have the people in the south ones, you know, um, who are not winter flyers, if they were in the north ones, and how, how do you get, you know, a little difference in um, the difference in the hangers as far as rental, 
you know, a little less in the north side or something to get the winter flyers to put them over there because they don't fly in the winter. And again, at this moment, because we do not have um, any set standards relating to flying, uh, we rent to everyone who has a licensed, insured, and flyable aircraft. Mm -hmm. We do not track hours. We do not track if you fly in the winter. Yeah. So um, we can talk a little bit more amongst our working group Just about be, that. You know, for thought. Mm -hmm. and if a person comes up there and rents it and he says, well, I don't fly in the winter, I'll pay so much less a month for north north facing ones that'll give the people you know it'll it won't happen overnight but uh, just food for thought you know like i said if this 13 hours comes in that'll clear out most of the people so <laughs> because there's a lot of people there that you just annual their plane right just something to keep in the back of your mind when you make great changes or whatever you do that they should be classified maybe a little different. I don't know if they are now or not. I know the newer hangers are more D hangers. So there is rate changes between them. And we can certainly take a look at the lease rates at, at our working group meeting as well, if that's of interest. I think, yeah, it, and then nature will take it. You know, people, if they have to spend less to be in another hangar, maybe they'd ask for it if it comes up, who knows? to work on on the working group jerry thank you um i was going to um since jerry brought up and stopped us from adjourning um christy do you feel like you and the airport manager have the tools necessary right now to deal with the issue of the one airplane because we're not going to meet and we're not going to get to consider the working group's um recommendations for minimum standards until well, and Mike can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that the airplane has been there for a few winters now. Um, so um, I can, I've been, I've been talking to him and, and trying to encourage moving the aircraft, um, but it may be that it might be another winter if there's, if the minimum standards are not developed before then. Again, I can continue talking to him yeah. and recommending that it, um, receive the maintenance needed and, and move, but it may be a, another situation where it is there over the winter. I would be willing to talk to him about maybe working something around that to move it again you, you mentioned earlier Chrissy we got the problem with liability but if he were to accept putting it back where we had it last year uh, if he agrees to that uh, I think we should entertain that for this coming winter I can talk to him Yeah, and and he and he knows that isn't going to happen <laughs> if it ever moves. Yeah. Okay, so a good reason to have the working group. If he knows that some changes are going to be made and the rules are going to change, and it's his, he, he's going to be subject to that. He might entertain moving it to another location on the airport this winter. I, I'll talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. That I'll make a motion of adjournment. Staying for now on this one. <laughs> Do we have a motion from the new entries to adjourn? <laughs> I'll just say to Jay and Wayne too, if you wanna stay just a few minutes afterwards, I can update you on the committee actions from the meeting. I was hoping. Good idea, thank you.
and a second for adjournment. I'll second it.